Hi, I'm Jim Cassetta, local history librarian here at the Pearl River Public Library. And um, today, in honor of our 60th anniversary, we're doing another interview with uh, our neighbor, Don Benedetto, who lives on Central Avenue. Welcome, Don. Hi, Jim. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I am very happy because we've had a great relationship yes. over well, the past 20 years, maybe, or a little mm -hmm. less, and uh, with you as a patron and coming into the library. And I have to say, you have a wonderful personality, and it's always a pleasure to see you come in. And I was very happy for you when you got married, and your wife is just as nice as you are. So well, nice, Jim. Thank you. You're welcome. And that's, you know, that's really, I like... Um, I like our patrons being successful and positive in their lives, yeah. you know. So I'm going to ask you, uh, you know, a few questions uh, concerning uh, your life, your growing up, and, and your uh, perceptions of the library. Mm -hmm. um, so let's we'll start. Where were you uh, born? I was born in Newark, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. In an Italian ghetto. Mm -hmm. We didn't know anybody other than, you know, people who ate meat, meatballs and macaroni and <laughs> right. very, very cute. And then as, you know, as time went on and life expanded, here I was arriving in Pearl River. Mm. And uh, I guess it was the Irish stronghold in those days. Yeah, probably around the, the 80s. Ago. Yeah, when yeah. you came the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I loved it right away. Yeah. The, you know what it was? It was the parks. It was the nature. Uh, yeah. I'm like a bird watcher, nature type of person. And uh, Sterling Forest and Bear Mountain and Tallman Park. We're centrally these. located. The Jersey Shore, New York City, the mountains. And it's all right there. And we're so lucky to have uh, the um, state park so close to us, too. Harriman. Yeah, so, Harriman's so a beautiful. wonderful place. My sons and I go fishing. Yeah. We go fishing there in the spring. Um, what was your, describe to me your, your perception when you came to Pearl River, but first let me know why. Why did well, you come? Well, I came to Pearl River because I had met a girl who lived in Pearl River. Mm -hmm. And we moved in together. We lived in, on Middletown Road. And what happened was I was teaching and coaching and doing little odd jobs in Westchester. Okay. And I was living here. So I didn't really get to know anybody or meet anybody. Mm -hmm. And when I broke up with this girl, uh, I was walking down the street to come to the library, mm -hmm. believe it or not. And there was a little group of kids uh, practicing softball. Right. And they were running around doing the Irish jig, doing cartwheels. <laughs> and they were like maybe eight or nine. And the coach was like beside herself. Her name mm -hmm. was Margaret Bravo. Oh, I know Margaret. Very lovely person. Yeah, she's very nice. And as I walked by, there was a mother standing there, Sinead O'Flynn. Ah, uh, yes, I know her. Her daughter too. became a big, big softball star right. at Pearl River. And I had a little piece of paper, and I wrote my name and phone number. And I tapped the woman's shoulder, Sinead's shoulder, through the fence, and I said, if the coach needs any help, tell her to give me a call. Hmm. Well, that night... Margaret called me and said, help, I need help. So I got into coaching in Pearl River, mm -hmm. and I loved it. I coached for 15 years. Mm -hmm. I did softball, right. uh, boys baseball, right, I remember and that. basketball at uh, St. Margaret's CYO, oh, okay. boys and girls, right. and I loved it. And after that, I got to meet everybody. Right. And I met everybody in Pearl River, and it was just, just a wonderful group of people. Sure. That's, that's the best way to become, um, to sit on a board, to volunteer your time is the best way to get to know people. And then it becomes six degrees of separation. What you yes. wind up with is who knows him? I know that, you know, I know who, what, when, where. And, and if you don't grow up here, that's the best way to ingratiate yourself into the, into the community. Yeah. Because for years I didn't know anybody. Right. Because I was in Westchester and I was getting home late at night. You know, right. And then this door opened. Mm -hmm. and, and it's ironic because I was on the way to the library at the time. I was walking <laughs> right by Central Avenue. And there, there it was. See that? Yeah. That's, that's the wonderful. Escape. Now, when you were a kid, were you a reader? Yes. Ah. I loved to read. 
I love to read. Right. In fact, you had a librarian here, and I, I forgot his name. He was a little bit of an older man, and I used to come in maybe seven or eight years ago. Yes, Tom Wainwright. Okay, and I would say, I need some summer reading. And he would give me all these mm -hmm. books, Lake Will Be Gone, and, mm -hmm. and you know, really wonderful books. Yeah, he's a wonderful individual. He was very good. He had some very good advice for me. Yes. And I, I have to tell you, yes. years ago, uh, when I went to, I went to Iona College right. in Rochelle, and four or five of my best friends were English majors, mm -hmm. and they would always pass these books on to me. And Robert Ludlum became an addiction for me. That's great. I couldn't put these guys' books down. Hmm. And my friends would say, here, read, read this, Robert Ludlum, or Stephen King, or whoever it was. Yeah. And these are books you just can't put down. Oh, yes, they're extremely popular. And, very, very and, and that's the beauty of the library. The beauty of the library is you're not spending a large amount of money to read it, which is wonderful, but then it becomes a dust collector. Right. The library purchases it, you can request it. And you can read it as many times as you yeah. want, not have it kicking around the house. Yeah. So that's uh, another purpose of the library, you know. Could you see uh, this town without a library? No. If I could tell you a little story, my wife and all of her family, mm -hmm. when they come to the United States, mm -hmm. I bring them here. Right. They're from Brazil. They're right. from Brazil. Mm -hmm. And they're from Rio de Janeiro, like the second biggest city in Brazil. Right. And I'm like, and they're like, wow, this place is really nice. And I say, every town has a library. And they're like, no. Mm -hmm. Rio has like two libraries. Mm -hmm. One is very big. Right. And one is maybe in the, maybe in the poorer area. But they, may have, they have two, maybe three at the most libraries in Rio de Janeiro. I'm not criticizing Rio. Right. But it's not a point of emphasis. Well, sure, I can see that. Because, you know, if it's uh, a government sponsored and government paid for, then there's only a limited amount of resources. Right. We're here, it's a communal sharing of the interest, and it's done by the people, and that through taxes, and that is the best way to finance. Jim, they are work. blown away mm. by the fact that every town has a lot, and you can use the computers, you can borrow the books, mm -hmm. there's magazines. My wife will come with me sometimes here. Right. She gets all the cooking magazines and the decorating, ma she loves that stuff. Yeah. Sure. And it's right here. It's here for the asking. It's fantastic. It, absolutely. It's right at your fingertips. And that's that's wonderful. Do you attend any um, programs over the years? Have you come to the pro? I know you've been to some of my, when I used to bring in musical. Yes, acts. yes. Yeah. The music, we tried a few times to come for the, we came once for your bagel and uh, we were all ready to come for your bagel. Oh, and, for coffee talk. But it was, a, it was a Monday. It was a holiday. I forgot what holiday it was. We were all dressed up. We're going. And I said, honey, I think the library's closed. Oh, President's closed. Day? I, I think that's <laughs> one of those crazy <laughs> things. But here we were, ready and raring to go. Because yeah. my wife didn't understand English very well. Right. Now she understands English better and better. So she's more enthusiastic and Great. Eager. You guys should come. We do it every Monday. Yes. We have people from all over the world, from India to Japan. Uh, we have uh, another woman who came. She was from South Korea. She drops in every so often. And as you said, th it's a good conversational way to learn English. So there's a, that's another factor. So yeah. it's aside from camaraderie, we have people in Coffee Talk who will say, oh, Heather and I went somewhere on the weekend. You know, so or does anybody know a good... Thing so our uh, friend Dan said who attends he said go to Mr. Crispy they have excellent calzones and pizza and mm -hmm. artisan pizza and she went and then we all email oh it's wonderful so it's a social group within a social group. very good she'll like that I think so because we went to the will. Toastmasters right a few weeks ago right they were are they formal I've never you know it, it was a, a combined group. Mm -hmm. The uh, Rockland and the Sun, some, I forgot. Oh, Sunset. Sunset group. Yeah. And it was um, in person and on Zoom. They had mm -hmm. a big screen in your library in that right. room. It was a big screen. It was, I don't know, there must have been 20, 25 people present mm -hmm. and maybe another 20 people on the screen. All right. It was terrific. It is. And the best part about the Zoom programs is the fact that in a 24-hour per period, you can get anywhere between 250 to 500 viewers if it's on Facebook Live. Oh, so that's another yeah. aspect of the programming. But So you enjoy the program. 
very much. Yeah. And we're going to be at your coffee talk for sure. I hope, I hope so. We brought friends years ago mm -hmm. to the um, Mommy and Me right. programs because right. we had two Brazil, my wife had two Brazilian friends with infants. Mm -hmm. So we brought them here. They loved it. See? Yeah. They loved it. Kids That's were wonderful. crawling around. And, right. Now, this Saturday, uh, you're going to be a presenter at a program. Yes, I am. Tell them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them about it. Um, Tell our viewers about it. Yes, Adrian. Uh, but years ago, I spoke at the library. Jim invited me to speak. And it was very sweet. And uh, COVID came, and that was the end of that. Mm. But um, after COVID sort of dissipated, mm -hmm. um, Adrian, I guess, is in charge of the Programming or yes, part of the program? she's doing programming. And she asked me if I would like to speak. I guess, I guess you might have told her. I did. And I said, yeah, I'd love to. So we organized a talk, and the title of the talk was, um, is, if cauliflower can become pizza, you, my friend, can be or do anything. <laughs> and it's really cute. And we had it in this room the first night, and we had... A thirty-plus people, which was that's good, that's lovely, a very good, lovely turnout for a program. And the next time we did it, uh, it was like a funny day. I forgot what it was, and uh, we had I think eighteen people, which is cute. We're going to do it again this Saturday, March eleventh, at three o'clock, and then again April tenth, mm -hmm. which is a Monday night. That's a Monday night, seven o'clock, seven o'clock, yes. And then May eighth. So Adrian, she's very organized. Yes, she is. She has the bulletin already filled in. <laughs> And then, so after this Saturday, the next ones will be Monday nights, uh, April 10th and May 8th. And it's lovely. It's sweet. My wife brings um, nuts and oh, chips and, and fruit, fruit right. cheese. And we, we socialize, sort of like your group. Team. Sure. Exactly. It's as much a community thing as it right. is a talk. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very interesting you should mention that because in 1963, when they started uh the drive to build this library here. The uh, fella, Fred Losher, who was on the original push in 1935 to start a library, um, a public library, said it was a community effort. And it's such the right, you know, it's, it's social agency almost. It's such um, a positive fit for the library to double as a community center mm -hmm. because it has a lot of things for a lot of people and it's egalitarian and it's uh, you know fantastic so i'm very happy to be a, a librarian here at the pearl river yeah. library and it's a great community we need that because uh, we're so connected as far as technology but we're so right. far apart far apart yeah i i we're said so isolated i always said that um Technology desocializes us. I mean, in some ways it doesn't. And there, I like shopping online. Mm -hmm. Sure, beats the, fighting the crowds in a mall. Yeah, yeah. But um, there's nothing like human interaction. I agree. You know? I mean, I'm not saying anything against technology because I do reels on Facebook and, mm -hmm. and stuff on Facebook. And um, hundreds and hundreds of people view the reels. They're one minute and they're cute little positive things, little right. snippets. Right. But uh, that sense of community. Yes. If I could tell you, we have a new couple uh, living in our building mm -hmm. on the 120 East Central. Right. And they're from the Ukraine. Now, we don't know exactly what their situation is, but they have a little daughter who's two, and the mom is pregnant. Mm. And uh, I don't know if they were fugitives. I have no idea what transpired in the Ukraine. Right. As far as they were concerned. Oh, they're but, refugees, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. And they, uh, they um, I think they have family in Slotesburg or whatever. But we told them, we had a little greet and meet with them in our apartment. Oh, so they nice. meet the, build, the people in the building. Mm -hmm. And I told the woman that the library is wonderful. And she brings her library here all the, She brings her, her daughter, daughter, who's two, right. to the library all the time. Good. And we brought, we babysit for a couple of families. Mm -hmm. We bring them to the library all the time. And then the children's library have these things. I have a box of... Just crafts. Yes. And you, you made, you know, they made little black cats and they right. make Chinese uh, lanterns. Chinese they lanterns. Made, I think that's what's up today. Chinese lanterns. That's adorable. Yeah. It's, so, and the children remember it their whole lives. Yes. I remember coming here for programs and, and I still remember mm -hmm. 
but we rode a pony once there before the building was expanded. We had a lawn, and You're they kidding. had brought in a pony. You can go on a pony ride anytime. You know, we didn't have to pay. We were beside ourselves. You know, how nice. Yeah, and um, it was. I always have fond memories, and that's what drew me to this profession. And the library here. I noticed you have some sort of a Lego thing for kids to work on. Yes. That's, you have the jigsaw puzzle people can right? can work on. That's Stuff right. like this. Brings people in. And I know Adrian said you have a game game day or game night. Yeah, there's it's, game night. And we, you can also take out puzzles and right. if you want to take them at home and do them for 28 days. Uh, also, uh, the learning lab that we have right. is just is something – that to me is a wonderful uh, augmentation to any kind of learning they'll get in the schools, the kids, especially the junior high and elementary yeah. school types. So um, that age group was not really being served. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, John Aiello is doing a pretty good job with it. And, and there's a woman who does a younger age. Yes, Alyssa. And I was sitting outside one day. The children were so enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. She was building a bridge, mm -hmm. and they had pieces. And these little kids were just so enthusiastic about what she was doing. Mm -hmm. To me, it was just wonderful. You know, it's, you mentioned that. And I sit there and I say to myself, what would these kids be doing if they didn't have the opportunities? And... For me, the positive aspect of a library is that it keeps kids occupied and educated in a positive way instead of coming to your house and breaking a window or something mm -hmm. worse. So another facet of yeah. the importance of the library. And you're socializing. Right. Because we babysit on a, on a pretty frequently lately. And two little girls. Mm -hmm. And we bring them here. Mm -hmm. whenever we can, because, you know, they sit there on their phones and watch TV yeah. and make popcorn. But we bring them here. That's and invariably, when they're here, they see other children. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, they're all playing together. Yes. And the mothers have a smile from ear to ear. Right. We have a smile from ear because right. we don't have to watch over them every second. It gives them a break. They're having a good time. Sure. And, the, and the, that's uh, socialization. We love it. Yeah. And what happened was one time we came, last, last week we came, we brought the girls here. Yeah, I saw you. And they had some sort of a scavenger hunt or something. Yes. Find the president's pictures, find mm -hmm. a picture Abe of... Lincoln's hat. <laughs> it was so cute. Yeah. And they were, because we had three girls that day, mm. two different families, and they were like, can you help us find, uh, you know... Abel, Abel Lincoln's hat. I said, no, no, have fun, girls. Yeah. And there was another, two little other kids. Right. And they were all together. Yes. It was adorable. Yes. That's and the nice. librarian did a great job. Sure. She was like, who wants to find it? And then when they were done, who would like to do crafts? And she right. had little packets of crafts. Right. I I'd love like to, it. I'd like to see a phone do that. Yeah. Right. So it's very, as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, it's, it's very important, the job we do here. And it's very interesting. We talked, spoke about social agency, and that started in the 60s here. Right. That concept started in Pearl River with um, Patricia Turnus, who was our first uh, certified librarian in 1963. And she would speak about it, too. But she was very much a, a director of her times. We didn't have programs in those days. Huh? We had happenings. Oh, really? <laughs> well, Don, thank you so much for coming and talking Jim, to us. My pleasure. Yeah, my pleasure. Sure. I'm so happy uh, to have you come in. and let, It's always nice to get, you know, expose the inner workings of what people think about, you know, coming to Pearl River and the library. And um, we'll see you all in the fall at our 60th anniversary celebration of the library here at 80 Franklin Avenue. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, Jim.